Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Do you have an app idea that you've been dreaming about but don't know how to actually start building it? Use Bubble. I've been using Bubble for a number of years now. It's an extremely powerful, no-code platform that enables you to build, launch, and scale real products without investing thousands of dollars on engineers, designers, or spending time trying to code it yourself. Use Bubble's visual drag-and-drop tool to create really anything from marketplaces, SaaS products, and so much more. Join over 2 million people, including myself, already using Bubble to launch and grow businesses. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Joe Tolzman. He's the CEO at Rocket Plan Technologies, Inc. Joe, welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin. It's awesome to be here. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I think what you guys are doing at Rocket Plan, especially the industry that you're building technology for, isn't really known for technology. But maybe before we get into all that, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I grew up in Croatia. I came to visit my parents here in Canada in 2003 shortly after I got out of military back in Croatia. And uh, almost 20 years later, I'm still here. It's probably one of the best decisions that I've made. Okay, so what made you stay? Um, I just love the, the lifestyle here. It's quite different than European or Croatian. Just like one language, you know, a lot of opportunities. And uh, yeah, it's a good thriving community. Very cool. So walk us through your background maybe some highlights along the way up into what you're doing today, and then we'll dive into Rocket Plan. Sounds good. Um, when I came to Canada, I couldn't speak a word of English, so it was oh. pretty exciting. It was, uh, it was challenging, but it was a good, good journey. I figured uh, I got to find a job to interact with people, practice my English, and get better from there. So I landed the job at Dairy Queen. I worked there for about seven months. Okay. It was, uh, it was quite an experience, but uh, it kind of gave me confidence and enabled me to start doing my own thing. So I got into doing restoration, renovation, little repairs, eventually build a company to do new real estate developments for customers. And then I've done some of my own real estate developments as well. And economy was good up until 2008. It was global recession. The world fell apart. And I got pretty lucky at the time. I lucked in a contract that kept us busy for about two years. Wow. Fixed fixing a complex of six buildings but um eventually that right out 2010 economy was still pretty soft there was not much happening and um i had good relationships with property managers they keep asking us can you guys do emergency response flood and fire restoration insurance work when i heard insurance recession proof i was like great i'm in so eventually i started a company here in vancouver with two other guys and we build it to over 100 employees with branches wow. in Vancouver and Calgary. And um, when I started, I was project managing, taking those calls, responding to the emergency, working with my crew in the field, doing demolition cleanup, gathering all the documentation, going home, manually creating those reports, uh, doing estimates, doing invoicing. And I was able to handle that in the beginning. But as we grew, we were hiring more and more people. Now we're implementing software for this vertical, went through implementation of three of them, and it was pretty painful. It took like three to six months going through the process to realize none of them really worked. And the reason for that was they were all built before smartphones really became smart. So uh. well, the workflow was totally backwards. The nature of the business is that when you show up at the site of the damaged property, you don't really know what you're dealing with. So you have to document everything for reporting to the insurance companies, but also for yourself to understand the extent of the damage, what the scope of work is going to be, and um, so you can quantify it in the end and provide those estimates and, and billing. So 
back in the day, that was all done manually, taking photos, taking notes, sometimes even paper, and then taking photos or emailing that back to the office. It was huge delay, room for error, just enormous, and it was very inefficient, but that was just the way it's done throughout the industry. Then one day I figured I got to hire a software engineer, bring them on staff and build something that actually works for the people in the field, you know, understanding dynamics between internal stakeholders in our company, but also external stakeholders, property managers, insurance owners, uh, insurance uh, companies, property owners, tenants, and everybody involved in the process to keep everybody informed. So we built this prototype. It looked like 1980s DOS, black screen, <laughs> green and red buttons. It was pretty basic, but it worked well. So we were able to capture all the data on the go without making anybody to learn anything new because everybody on the job already is collecting the data. They know it's relevant, but now they're doing it on their mobile device, getting it into one place. So our office can begin estimates. They have all the information for billing, but also to report to property manager, insurance adjuster, uh, property owner, what's going on, you know, where's the end to this and, and kind of eliminate a lot of stress, a lot of confusion, but also streamline the process. So we were significantly more operationally efficient. We cut out over 50% in admin and management labor, and we were now scoring a lot of new business because insurance adjusters, property managers, they preferred to work with us because us providing that information to them timely and organized makes their jobs easier. And one day I realized that everybody in the industry has got the same problem throughout. And what a massive opportunity is to help you know, connect field and office teams and uh, help a lot of people in the process. Interesting. So by the sounds of it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you don't really come from a technical background. Is that correct? 100%, yes. So how did you know or basically decide to start leveraging technology and software? Because that, for a lot of people that don't come from a technical background, can be really daunting. You know, I had general understanding of what's available out there, but I really focused on how to apply technology for the field, for the person who is doing the job to make it easier. And it goes back to, you know, fundamentals, user experience. It's an essential to success and, and work it from the bottom up rather than from the top down. And me working in the field, I was pretty lucky to understand you know, what it's like to do demolition, do cleanup, running equipment, capturing all the documentation, you know, typing notes in the phone or in a piece of paper and then uploading it in some system. So I, I think I was lucky to be familiar with all aspects of the job to yeah. kind of get it going and then find the best people you know, when it comes to UX, when it comes to engineering and piecing it all together. Got it. What, what advice do you give to people that are maybe were in a or in a similar situation um, where you were a number of years ago before you were actually building software? Well, I think identifying the problem and then working towards solution. That's the that's the beginning of it. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm curious then, how did you actually decide to productize um, the product and actually how did Rocket Plan, you know, come to be? Yes, yeah, so, you know, after we built their prototype, it worked really well and realizing that everybody in the industry is struggling with this and it creates a lot of stress, you know, homeowners that get displaced from their apartments, from their homes for a prolonged period of time, unnecessarily because it just, the whole process is inefficient. And then we figured, you know, we solve this problem for ourselves. Everybody else got this problem. Let's help everybody in the industry and make some money with it as well. Interesting. Was it or has it been a tough sell to get software into these this industry because it's not known to be necessarily that tech savvy? You know, construction is the second least digitized industry. Number one is farming and number two is construction. So adoption, generally speaking, is a challenge, but we really focused on building this product that anybody who can take a selfie basically anybody who's got a smartphone, they're ready to go with no training. And it's built for the person who's already on the job, so it doesn't require them to learn something new. You know, if somebody's doing demolition, taking photos of demolition, they're already taking photos, so that's pretty basic. 
but now we're doing it on rocket plan where everything falls into the place as relevant to the project to the insurance claim um, getting people aware of it it was just marketing you know just letting people know solution is there have them see it and then from there on he just picked up it was amazing to see how you know from smaller individually owned companies to some of the largest globally the largest restoration firms are coming on board and after they signed up it was very little to no interaction with their users because the product was built to be super intuitive really focused on the user experience interesting so walk us through from actually creating an account to actually using the product to do, you know, say like a restoration on a house or a building, like walk us through that. I get it's hard kind of sometimes when it's visual, but can you maybe give us a rough idea of how to use the product and might you get just like a bit of a deeper dive into that? Yeah, totally. So I think we can go through one use case scenario. So a typical water loss, which is the most common property damage. There was a burst pipe in unit 2001, one, two, three main street. So, okay. Project manager receives the call, knowing that there was a burst pipe. At that point, they don't really know, you know, how many rooms are damaged in that apartment. Is it additional apartment, common area affected as well? So they're showing up on site. They need to get work authorization signed from the property owner or tenant. They need to start assessing and documenting damages. So the process is unit 201, uh, you go into kitchen. There was a burst pipe underneath the sink. So documenting this as a cause of loss for insurance purposes, uh, then working the extent of the damage in that kitchen, taking photos, infrared camera photos, because sometimes water damage is not visible uh, in the photo, uh, infrared camera picks it up. So now traditionally with a rocket plant, you would do all that manually. Then you would have to say, I don't know, floor is damaged. What type of floor? Laminate, carpet, tile. It could be so many different materials. Um, Without rocket plant, that would have to be manually captured and then entered into some internal system where estimator accountant would be able to quantify the damage to provide estimate invoice and also to report to insurance company. And it would take forever because you know just scanning that property takes a while. Now, after you gather the data, you need to deliver it to someone that someone hasn't been to the site. Uh, it's really hard to make sense out of it. You know, even, even for yourself, after you've been to three, four apartments, multiple rooms in each, it gets quite confusing and very inefficient to upload the data, organize it, and then have accurate estimate and billing. With Rocket Plan, we build it so person does whatever they're doing, their unit 201, taking photos, infrared camera photos in the kitchen. They're selecting what materials are damaged. Uh, they're taking measurements of the room from there everything automatically converts into reports. So whoever looks at it, the insurance carrier, insurance adjuster, it's super clear for them what happened, date stamped, GPS stamped. So it's everything organized falling into place. Super easy for them to verify uh, a data integrity and carry on from there. So imagine repeating this process, you know, you got living room, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, another apartment, common area. Now, after you gather all this data, you need technicians to come and actually do the, do the work. Sometimes it's um, cutting up drywall, removing the flooring, uh, moving the furniture. When furniture is being moved, every content, every piece of furniture in that room needs to be documented, whether it's stored into another room, somewhere in the building, or totally packed out in storage. And this could be now you know, two months, three months of uh, work on the property. So with Rocket Plan, this whole process is streamlined data is captured you know immediately on the spot falls into the place and then automatically processed throughout all the way until the money's in the bank interesting okay so i'm curious obviously do i have to kind of start with a, a template or or like of in your case what you just said like water damage but if there's like fire damage is it different like how is it similar or different um, based on what the damage is, or is it not really any different? So the workflow in general terms, it's very similar. There's okay. variations in it, but we build it in a way that works for the workflow 
from that person initially showing up on site to the workers working in the field to the people working in the office, estimator and accountant. So it's built for each of those stakeholders or, or roles in the company for their particular role. And it's all connected throughout the workflow. And that's what makes it so efficient. So people don't really have to look or deal with some data that is not relevant to them. You know, if somebody's setting up drying equipment or, or dealing with smoke damage, it's only what's relevant to them while they're doing that part of the job. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. So how does it work if say I'm on the insurance side or the customer side, like how do like if my company is a restoration company and I'm using rocket plan, how do I get it in the hands of, you know, the insurance company and maybe the customer, do I just send them a link or, or walk us through that? Oh yeah. Either automatically generating PDF report and emailing it straight from rocket plan or sending a link to the information that's relevant to them. So when it comes to property manager, you know, their, their biggest thing is to understand that work is underway. And because there's so many different stakeholders involved in, in uh, the actual work on site, right. Some, Sometimes it's challenging for property manager to talk to project manager and restoration company who then needs to talk to their foreman and technicians to kind of get an update what they're doing when they're coming back. Sometimes there's a couple of days breaks in between to dry out that space. So there's no real activity other than, you know, drying equipment running to dry out the space. But then from the perspective of the owner, it's like, well, these people came, they ripped my apartment apart and nobody's showing up for a few days so there's a lot of that you know broken communication while with rocket plan it's super clear to them at any given point without calling people and asking what's going on to know the status of the project got it okay that makes sense so walk us through basically how how do i ask the question um let me see. Um, if, like, if something happens that delays something, do I get like a notification to say like this material is on back order and it's going to be an extra few days, or or is that the type of stuff you capture in in the reporting, or, or walk us through that a little bit? Yeah. So from the beginning, from that uh, mitigation, you know, taking property apart mitigating damage and then doing the rebuild everything is built for that seamless process so oh, okay you know from scheduling for example if you have to remove a uh, hardwood floor well that hardwood floor might have to lead time to be ordered I don't know, two ah, months okay. because it's some kind of specialty item so it's all accounted for in that schedule and, and it enables project manager to actually keep that schedule tight so you know they order flooring first thing while they're doing the other work so that lead time kicks in, so there's no breaks in between. Got it, okay. And then how do you monetize the platform? Do you just charge like a monthly fee or, or walk us through that? Yeah, so it's it's pretty simple SaaS model. It's uh, per user per month. So we have a couple of different options. Uh, yeah, ultimately it's uh, about $100 per user per seat, but it eliminates significant amount of manual labor, um, yeah, and enables companies to invoice pretty much immediately when the job is completed, submit to the insurance companies and get paid quicker, which often takes you know, months to sort out because insurance companies, they need uh, documentation to be able to process the claim. Right, and you're basically instantly providing with all that documentation. Yeah, you know, from, from insurance adjusters or carriers perspective, uh, they, they want to know what's the extent of the damage. They need to confirm the coverage that this loss is covered and then, you know, make sure it's done properly and, and efficiently for a reasonable price and close the claim. If they don't, when they don't have the information, it's very often because that information comes from you know, multiple people and it gets delayed and mixed up. It creates more work for them and it just extends the, the whole duration of the claim cycle. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So you mentioned earlier that construction is one of the industries that doesn't have much technology. Why do you think that is the case? And and like obviously, you know, Rocket Plan's trying to make that better, but why do you think that's the case that just it hasn't really been 
or it's just starting to get hit with technology? You know, I think it's the nature of the industry. And you know, I'm thinking back when I was you know, working on a job site 10 to 12 hours, you know, using hammer and, and it's just not practical to open up the laptop and, right. and you know, doing something there. Um, smartphones didn't really become smart until 2015, 2016. So all the tech that was built, it was built for the laptop, for the office, you know, and right. for the people that want to receive information. But somehow they missed the smart of capturing the data in the field because that's where it begins, and then connecting it to the office. And since we couldn't find you know product that would do that, that's why I decided to build our own. Okay. What other advice do you give to people maybe in the construction or kind of non-technical space to actually build and follow through and find the people to actually execute? Because that's sometimes the hardest heart. Yeah, I mean, I would you know suggest to everyone not to, you know, fall in this old pattern because everybody's opinion is like, yeah, you know, there's technology, but it's too clunky, it's not user friendly. You know, the, the things are developing fast. So technology is being better. And you know, what we're doing, I'm sure there's other verticals that focus on fixing those problems that haven't been fixed yet for the user in the field, for the person on the job to make their life easier. Okay. And then at what advice do you give people to actually go from maybe building something internally to productizing it and letting arguably your competition use what you're building? You know, that's always 50, 50. I mean, I always think like, how long is it going to take to build something? Will you get it right? And if you're already doing business, is it just better and, and more efficient and economically smarter to pay the fee and get something that solves your problem? So I think each person individually should uh, make their own assessment on it. Okay, fair enough. So I'm, I'm curious then if when when you guys were building this and you, you talk about user experience being super important, because of your background, you could probably take a pretty good guess at what needed to be on the screen and, and kind of a simple flow. But did you do user testing or or walk us through how you're going to nail the user experience? Oh, absolutely. You know, I would put like a basic framework together of, of the workflow and then focusing on each of those steps in depth. And then we built a mock-up, then we build a prototype, then we run some tests internally, then we got just random people. And then the final thing was to give it to people who are not even in the industry and try to get them make sense out of it. And they did. I was like, okay, now, now we think we did a good job here. If somebody who hasn't even been on a job understand this workflow and what it does, I think we got our message across to, to make it super easy for anybody to use it. Interesting. How, how long would you say that process took just to give people some estimate? Because it's not overnight. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, you know, it took us it took us about a year to get oh, to wow. the initial, initial version, and then test it, and go back and you know improve the workflow and just user experience. And um, yeah, it's it's a it's a lengthy process, and it's not like once and it's done because there's so many variables to it, and there's so many different people and and you know their take on it. So it's it's really critical to find a universal spot that everybody's just like makes sense. This is how we do it. No, that's fair. So how do you manage feature requests with your own roadmap? You know, again, because I worked in the industry and, and I'm familiar with all aspects of the job and the entire workflow from you know being technician all the way up to the owner of the company, I was lucky to lay it out and prioritize it in a way that made sense to me. And as we were doing it, it, it confirmed a lot of things. And sometimes people you know, they ask for things that are relevant to them as a project manager, but they kind of miss the mark of the technician. Or if you talk to a technician, they, they don't really see what else is happening when it comes to project management and estimating. That's why it's really important to kind of see the whole workflow, how it goes from the beginning until the end, and then just connect the dots in between. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. It's You bring up something that's interesting. I think a lot of non-technical people 
don't realize how valuable their skill set is and and very much can be when building software for these types of industries especially when they're in the field right and and i think that doesn't get talked about enough and and i think it, it's it's interesting because of as somebody that's like been through it it's having somebody that knows kind of from every role or the more of every role that they know the better off it's going to be especially when you're trying to build technology for these kind of non tech sectors do you agree with that absolutely you know here's like a prime example when i worked doing an estimate in the office you know i know what i need to make my estimating easier right and so yeah being able to navigate through all the photos seeing infrared camera photos be clear which room room this belongs to in which unit um you know have easily accessible who's the owner what's the list of damaged material the summary of it like this is what's the most important thing to me now when i work as a technician or project manager in field i'm gathering all that information i'm running from room to room you know they might be elderly in the apartment stressed out it could be like 2 a.m because it just happened you know it's a stressful situation now if i gotta organize the data on a go where you know running there's another apartment i need to get to those people are away you gotta coordinate with their friends or family to get the access it's just not practical to do it so from that perspective there's totally other set of things that are relevant to that person now combining that and making it uh easy to use for that person when they're gathering the data when they're doing that work that's the integral part of it all yeah interesting so obviously you've been doing this for a number of years now what other advice do you give to you know founders or um other individuals whether they're in the restoration construction industry or not well i think it all starts with identifying the problem finding the solution and have a clear path how to get there and be prepared it's not going to be a straight line okay then when things maybe didn't go you know the way you wanted it and that like that to reference that straight line you just mentioned how did you kind of persevere and, and decide not to give up because i think especially early on when software is taking a long time because it usually takes longer than expected what made you actually keep going and, and getting this thing built? Because it said you said it took you about a year, or you I'm guessing you probably thought it would take maybe months, not not a year to get kind of version one or, or walk us through that. Totally. You know, I, I, I knew for myself that everybody's got this problem and I knew what the solution is. Now getting to that solution, you know, it was a number of iterations because before you get into it, you don't really know which obstacles you're going to encounter so i think the key is to get in as soon as possible hit those obstacles and then figure out how to get around it yeah that makes sense so I, i'm curious how did you work with sorry i guess did you hire an internal dev or did you basically outsource to a company or a bit of both so we uh we had our own internal uh software engineer okay yeah we had our own internal software engineer and uh we're keep adding to the team you know when it comes from back end uh, ios web um, ux so we're keep adding to the team expanding it and then refining the product we had based on the feedback we we're receiving and adding more features to provide more value to the to the customer I see. And then are you basically every time you're adding features, are you trying to like upsell them on different things or it's kind of you pay your hundred dollars and it's you get everything? So, yeah, that, that package includes everything, but um, we do have smaller components. However, to get the maximum value out of it, you know, a company as a whole would need the entire feature set. Now, 
certain things are relevant only to people in the field. Certain things are only relevant to people in the office. So we do have those options if they only care about certain things. We also build this product that it's super easy to integrate with any legacy system. So that way, company don't have to go through some extensive implementation and switching to another software. We're just connecting field and office in this situation where we enable field workers to capture the data on a go on a mobile device and then connect it to their internal system if they need to use it for whatever reason. Okay, but so can they, they can use their internal system in parallel or they basically have to switch to Rocket Plan or it's really up to them? It's up to them. They don't have to switch necessarily. Um, th there are you know, large franchises with hundreds or thousands of locations. Uh, recently, we got one of the largest contractors globally come on board with um, you know not changing their internal system. It just helped them to enable their field workers gather all the data, have it in one place, and then connect into their internal system. So we're not changing their workflow. We're not disturbing anything. We're just helping them streamline the process of getting data from the field into their offices. Got it, okay. How did you land your first customers and what advice do you give to people to actually do the same? Um, yeah, I was calling people that I have in my network, had them try it out, get the feedback, and then eventually they started paying for it. Uh, we're doing a lot of marketing. You know, it's very industry specific. It's right. a vertical, it's like 650 billion. Oh wow. Um, it's on volume. But uh, if you're not involved into it, you probably don't care about it. So the good thing about it, it's recession proof. So even throughout COVID, you know, there were things happening. Business was going as usual. So, so that was a good thing. But, um, you know, have a, have a clear communication of what problem you're solving. Let people know solution is available and make sure that that solution is easy to use. I think those are the, the key parameters. Makes sense. So you mentioned marketing. What type of marketing stuff did you do early on and continue to do? We're doing digital marketing, you know, okay. email campaigns. Uh, we're doing social media uh, and then calling people. So cold calling? Mm, I wouldn't call it cold calling. You okay. know, we're calling people that were kind of aware of us that we already interacted with through the emails wow. or we were in their social media. So yeah, it wasn't exactly cold call. But uh, there's definitely a good component of making those calls because we found it that you know, people are busy. They're doing 24-7 emergency response. And their schedules are unpredictable. And they're always in the middle of something. So sometimes you connect with them while they're driving. Um, you know, Then you set up the meeting. Then they cancel the meeting because they had an emergency that happened, up, ha happened so they have to reschedule. But uh, we build a product where we have quite a bit of success with auto conversion, like zero touch where you know people just go to the website they see what rocket plan can do for them they can download it get into it and, and you know get it going and start seeing immediate value from day one right and correct me if i'm wrong here no credit card required to actually sign up and, and try this thing yeah you, you know anybody can go to the app store download rocket plan they can try it out uh, we're really focused on this plg approach product -led growth to make it easier for people to um, start receiving that immediate value from day one. You know, it's not like, you know, you got to go through lengthy implementation, onboarding process, and then, you know, you're going to see your returns later on. It's today. Like you download it now, it takes like two minutes, three minutes to onboard the entire team, whether you're onboarding two people or, or 200 people, it's the same process. Everybody gets it going through that, maybe like 10 minutes worth of tutorials and uh, everybody's ready to go. And the key thing is they're not doing anything new. They know how to use smartphone. Most people do these days. Right, and yeah. they're already working on the job, so we're not requiring them to do anything different. But everything falls into the same place. Got it. No, that makes a lot of sense. And then how is the desktop component similar or different than the phone component? Is the desktop more kind of office-focused or insurance yes. focused Okay. So desktop is more to receive the data. Mobile is more to capture the data. Got so it. when you're in field, you're capturing those photos, notes, getting work authorizations. So you're doing it all in rocket plan. That's immediately available to people in the office, estimators, accountants, so they can do whatever they need to do on, on their end and have that data in real time and neatly organized. So they can make their work more efficient, but also more accurate. 
because without it, you know, there's always the room gets mixed up with another apartment or the rooms get missed. So, so there's a lot of confusion there. But with Rocket Plan, it's all in one place. Got it. So, depending on geographic region, is the process the same, different? It really depends. Walk us through that. No, you know, it's consistent throughout. It doesn't matter where it is. When there was a property damage, the, the work needs to be done. And then it's the same process of documentation and reporting to insurance companies and same process of quantifying the damage, producing estimates and doing billing. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then how does billing work? Like Rocket Plan handles my kind of invoicing and billing or, or walk us through that? We, we don't do billing, but okay. uh, we, we enable accountants to have all the information they need so they can produce that accurate billing. And there's a lot of backup information they need to, uh, to do their billing. And that's the big challenge. You know, when it comes from multiple people, it gets delayed, you know, they're billing like weeks after the job has been completed. Right. So they're missing, you know, work authorization or, you know, how many square feet of flooring has been replaced in this apartment, in this room. Now they have to figure out who was on the job weeks ago. You know, right. where is that information? That person is already doing so many jobs after, you know, this work authorization might have displaced in, you know, different folder or left in someone's vehicle. And, and it's, yeah, it's very inefficient. But with Rocket Plan, we get all of that information into one place, neatly organized for them, so they can do invoice efficiently and, and right away after the job is done interesting that that makes sense so you you mentioned something about time savings do you have any data around how much time you're actually saving a person or company in in a week i obviously it depends on how big the company is yeah so so generally speaking we reduced over 50 percent in admin and management labor wow and uh for the field workers eliminate at least one hour of their labor time you know, dealing with the paperwork, uploading it, sending it, and then significantly more for people in the office by having that data in one place. You know, often you could have estimator begins an estimate, and then, well, we're missing some information, and then they have to call someone. That someone works on another job. I gotta wait the next day before they gonna gather that information. Next day might be another emergency response, and, and then, you know, things just get delayed. So it becomes very inefficient for people in the office to do their work without rocket plan. With rocket plan, they get it in front of them, they get into it, they quickly complete it, and they're done. Got it. No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing, because tech's kind of going through a weird transition right now, you, you guys are actually actively hiring. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. We're adding our team from engineering to sales to marketing all throughout. Okay, so people can obviously go to the website and, and check it out if they're if they're looking for. Uh, Absolutely, it's rocketplantech.com. Very cool. So I'm curious, is there any other advice that you would give to maybe an entrepreneur or founder that maybe you wish you knew a little bit earlier on in your entrepreneurial journey? Um, I, I think I knew the basis, you know, it's all about getting things done. And I think that's regardless of, you know, which vertical, which industry that is, it's about identifying the problem, finding solution, and be prepared to do whatever it takes, do the right thing, no matter how hard it is. And how do you pull yourself through the times when it's really hard and don't just like quit and go back and get a day job or go back and, you know, do restoration work? Um, I, I don't think about it being hard. You know, it's just a job. It, it's... It's what keeps us going. It's kind of like going to the gym. You know, you sweat, you're tired, but you feel good when you're done. It's just like, it's, it's the process. And you enjoy that process and that, yeah, so, interesting. I get that. Very cool. But we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So how about we close with mentioning where people can get more information about yourself, Rocket Plan, and any other links you want to mention? Yeah, so connect with me personally on Instagram. It's Joe underscore Tolzman with two ends in the end. Uh, for Rocket Plan, check us out on rocketplantech.com. 
and uh, yeah, we're always looking to connect with new people. We're we're experiencing explosive growth, so there's a lot of opportunities developing, and we're always looking for people who are driven and wired like us to always strive to do better and provide the best customer experience. Very cool. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you taking the time at your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you and have a good rest of your day, man. Likewise, you too. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.